Hello everyone and welcome to QuickMed, where medicine is explained quickly and easily. Today we will be discussing immunizations and knowing what is administered and when. I'll also be going over some tricks on how to remember the vaccination schedule because I know this material can be a little dry, so let's get to it. Alright, so let's start with the hepatitis B vaccine, which is administered at birth while baby is still in the hospital, and then between one to two months, typically at two months, and then later on at six months. And then next, we have the rotavirus vaccine, which is actually an oral vaccination, so it's given as a drop in the mouth, and this is given at two, four, and six months. And before we go on further, just make sure to keep in mind two, four, and six months when thinking about pediatric vaccinations, because this is when a majority of those vaccines are administered, and we'll go over them as well. All right, next up is PCV13, which is so named because it covers against 13 serotypes of streptococcus pneumoniae, and this leads to pneumonia and meningitis, among other infections. And this is also given at two, four, and six months, like we said, as well as at one year of age. Next is Hib, which covers against Haemophilus influenza type B. And it's important to know that this is just for type B because there are also non-typable strains of Haemophilus influenza that often lead to like mucosal infections, like ear infections and sinus infections. But it's really your type B that leads to a lot of invasive diseases. And so this is why we focus on this strain and vaccinate against it. And just like with PCV13, they're kind of easy to remember because you can group them together. Hib is given at two, four, and six months of age, and again, at one year of age. All right, let's move on to DTAP, which actually covers against three separate organisms, diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis. Diphtheria is caused by coronary bacterium diphtheriae, and it can lead to like a pharyngitis, lymphadenopathy type of picture. Tetanus is your classic lockjaw, spastic paralysis disease. And pertussis is known as your whooping cough disease. And these vaccines are given at 2, 4, and 6 months of age, again, as well as at 15 to 18 months of age. So keep that in mind because it's a little separate from PCV13 and Hib where it's given at 1 year of age. And then you get your fifth dose at 4 years of age. And IPV is your polio vaccine, and we don't see as much of polio anymore, thankfully, mainly due to vaccination. It's a potentially crippling and deadly disease that can lead to paralysis if the virus invades the brain and the spinal cord. This vaccine is given at 2, 4, and 6 months of age, and then at 4 years of age. And then your MMRV vaccine covers against measles, mumps, rubella, which can present similarly with some URI symptoms, but they're also unique, so make sure you know how those present, and then varicella, which is your chicken pox. And this vaccine is given at 1 year of age, and then at 4 years of age. So pretty easy to remember there. All right, so this table pretty much summarizes all of the vaccines that we give up until four or five years of age, so make sure to be familiar with these and when they're administered. As you can see here, the chart is organized by number of doses, where it increases in number of doses as you go down the table. And this can be a lot to remember, but it helps to remember some of the unique things about each vaccine. So for hepatitis B, make sure to know that it's the only vaccine given at birth. Rotavirus is unique in that it's the only oral vaccine that we have here. And your MMRV is the only one that's given at one year of age for its first dose and then at four years later on. I personally like to group together PCV13 and Hib because they lead to similar infections and they're given pretty much at the same exact time, so that can be easy to remember. I also like to group together DTAP and polio because they are given roughly at around the same time, except for some differences where DTAP is given at 15 to 18 months of age, but you don't get that with your polio vaccine. The only other vaccine that was not included in that table is your hepatitis A vaccine, and this is given as a two-dose series starting at one year of age, with the booster being given six months after the first dose. Influenza vaccine is something you might be asked about, especially when you can start administering the flu shots, and this can be given starting at six months of age. Now let's move on to your meningococcal vaccine, which covers against various serotypes of Neisseria meningitidis. And this is given as a two-dose series as well, typically at 11 to 12 years of age, and then at 16 years of age. And one way to remember the 16-year-old age mark is that you're trying to give the vaccine at a time in which the patient is at highest risk of contracting the disease. So 16 years is right before most teenagers start moving off to college, living in dorms, so in really tight spaces in which, you know, there's a higher degree of exposure potentially. And then we have our Tdap vaccine, and keep in mind this is similar to but different from your Dtap vaccine, which is what we were talking about earlier with our younger children, and this is typically given at 11 or 12 years of age. And another thing with the Tdap vaccine is that it is given with every pregnancy as a single dose between 27 to 36 weeks, so make sure to keep that in mind. 
And now let's talk about the HPV vaccine, which is given to protect against human papillomavirus. And this is actually the most common sexually transmitted pathogen. And HPV can cause a number of different things, including anal genital cancers, like your cervical cancers, anal cancers, as well as genital warts, among other things. And so if you think about it, the HPV vaccine is given as cancer protection or prevention, I should say, in the form of a vaccine, which is very interesting. And the HPV vaccine protects against various strains, particularly 16 and 18, which are known to cause the majority of cervical cancers worldwide, up to 70% of all cases, along with HPV type 6 and 11, which cause a majority of anal genital warts. In the United States, we only have the 9-valent vaccine, or Gardasil 9, which protects against type 6 and 11 and 16 and 18, as well as other types. And this vaccine is recommended at 11 to 12 years of age, but important things to know are that if the first dose is given before 15 years of age, it is given as a two-dose vaccine series, with the second dose given at 6 to 12 months after the first dose. If the first dose is not given during that time, then it becomes a three-dose series, with the second dose given one to two months later, and the third dose given six months later. And these would be one to two months and six months after the first dose. All right, so as usual, let us end with a practice question. So here we have a 21-year-old woman who is a college student is brought to the emergency department two hours after the onset of fever, chills, severe headache, and confusion. Her temperature is 102.2, respirations are 16, blood pressure is 100 over 60. Her physical exam shows numerous petechial lesions over the upper and lower extremities, and there is resistance to neck flexion. Analysis of her CSF shows numerous leukocytes and gram-negative diplococci. Administration of which of the following vaccines is most likely to have prevented this patient's condition? All right, to answer this question, let's first figure out what the diagnosis is. So here we have a college-aged woman. She's coming in with fever, has some petechiae on exam, also presenting with mucal rigidity with the resistance to neck flexion and her CSF is positive for an infection with a gram-negative organism. And given that the organism is a gram-negative diplococci, we're most likely thinking here of Neisseria meningitidis. So given this, your correct answer is B, which is the only vaccine listed here that covers against Neisseria meningitidis. And if you look at the age, it sort of fits because we know that the vaccine is administered at 11 to 12 years of age and then at 16 years of age. So this patient likely missed either one or both doses of the vaccine, which places her at a greater risk of contracting meningitis compared to someone else who has been fully vaccinated. All right, everyone, I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please make sure to like and subscribe so that we can continue to do what we're doing. And as always, good luck studying, everyone.